Assalamu alaikum, I'm Jeremy. Salam, I'm Ben. Together we have 15 degrees now. Today we're going to show you the sights and sounds of Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan is a country in Central Asia, sandwiched between Kazakhstan to its north and all the other stands to its south. A former Soviet Republic, it gained independence from the USSR in 1991, becoming a country for the very first time. Tashkent is the capital and the logical starting point for anyone coming to visit the country. And there are increasingly more and more people coming to see this previously undiscovered country. But why, Jeremy? Why are people only coming now? Well, Ben, I'm glad you asked, because until 2018, Uzbekistan was completely close to tourists, following the isolationist policies of its then dictator. But then he died in 2016, his successor decided to open up and welcome tourists. The new leader realized that tourism could well be his biggest asset, because scattered across the Kizilkum Desert that covers most of the country are the remarkably well-preserved remnants of the mysterious and glamorous Silk Road. But what is the Silk Road, Jeremy? All right, enough with the questions, we'll get to that later. Toshkent, like many Soviet cities, has an impressive metro system in which each of the stations have been elaborately decorated. The metro is like the rest of the city, exceptionally well planned. But this isn't just a coincidence, oh no. It's because the original Toshkent was completely demolished in an earthquake in 1966. This meant that the Russians were able to rebuild Toshkent as a model Soviet city, and you can really tell. The city is vast and sprawling, with wide sweeping avenues and enormous civic buildings spread out across the city centre. Toshkent is the biggest city in Central Asia and it's not a city that you want to get around on foot. Ignoring the temperatures in the high 30s, the distance between monuments is vast. Thank heavens for the metro then. Or you can take a taxi, and even that is unusual because almost every car on the road is a white Chevrolet, making even the traffic look like it's being city planned by the government. Although one thing that has changed since Soviet times is the return of public mosques. Uzbekistan is a secular state, reflecting its Soviet legacy for sure, but over 90% of its inhabitants are Muslim. Since its independence, Toshkent has invested a lot of money into adding mosques to its skyline once more, and the results are beautiful. And they were incredibly welcoming too, really open to us coming in and having a look around these remarkable public buildings. Toshkent is nice for sure, but the real reason we went to Uzbekistan was to head out onto the Silk Road. We decided to head to Kiva first, the furthest stop on our trip, before heading back to Bukhara, Samarkand, and then looping back to Tashkent again. The stops closest to Tashkent are linked by high-speed bullet trains, but to get to Kiva, we needed to jump on a 14-hour overnight train. Sleeping in Soviet area carriages, we had our own cabin and settled down for the night heading west. Only to wake up in the middle of the desert. Now there is something we'll absolutely never forget. The rolling sound dunes spread out to the horizon and aside from our train there was no sign of human life as far as the eye could see. Eating our breakfast gazing out across the sand is something that I'll remember for the rest of my life. <laughs> Well, we've survived the night. I wouldn't say that it was a comfortable night's sleep. Um, the cabin is fine. I mean, it's cramped, but it's absolutely fine. Um, when we got on the train, it was absolutely boiling, but once it started to move, the air conditioning started to work and it was cool enough to be able to sleep. It's quite loud. Yeah, quite... I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the noise and the motion of the train made it actually quite difficult to sleep, um, but I had earplugs, so. It was louder than I thought it was going to be though. No, with the windows closed with the air conditioning on. Yeah. Um, but outside is now beautiful. We couldn't see it last night, but we're traveling through a desert on a train. Like, what? Eventually, we arrived at our destination, Kiva. The walled city of Kiva dates back 1500 years, and its center, known as Ichan Kala, is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Inside these walls are over 300 protected buildings, most of which date from the 18th and 19th centuries. However, there are buildings that are much, much older, with some of the mosques dating back from a thousand years ago. Historically, Kiva was a capital of Khwarezmian civilization, which covered the western portion of Uzbekistan, as well as southwestern Kazakhstan and most of Turkmenistan. Kiva was an important stop on the Silk Road, so what exactly was that? 
The civilizations in Europe and Asia have always been separated by vast deserts and mountains, but between the 2nd century BC and the 15th century, trade routes were established between the two. A network of linked cities were established spanning over 4,000 miles, linking China in the east to Istanbul in the west. It was incredibly rare for one person to travel the lengths of the Silk Road, with goods being traded merchant to merchant in various trading posts along the route. Trading posts like Kiva. And these trading posts became extremely wealthy due to the amount of money and goods passing through their gates. Silk, spices, tea, ivory, cotton, wool and precious metals all were traded along the route. It also traded philosophical ideologies and, well, it brought the Black Death to Europe too. However, when a route was discovered that linked Europe to Asia by sea in the 15th century, this sprawling network collapsed almost overnight. There was no longer any need for the Silk Road, and cities that had been inexorably linked to the rest of the world suddenly became cut off, isolated and bankrupt. The Timurid Empire consolidated the people in the region soon after, but once that fragmented, the region split into numerous khanates before being absorbed into the Russian Empire in 1873. Today, Kiva is a sprawling archaeological site of monuments crammed alongside one another, like a sprawling open-air museum. I feel like Aladdin. The city is nothing short of remarkable. There are very few places on Earth that have retained their historical charm quite as well. And we're not just talking about small segments like most ancient cities. Oh no. The whole city, the entire Ichan Kala, from wall to wall, crammed with some of the prettiest and most exotic building you'll have ever seen, and no, I'm not exaggerating. We've climbed a minaret. That was fun. Make sure to check out this restaurant too because it serves some of the best foods and has the best views in the entire city. Seriously, check this one out. From Kiva, we took an excursion out into the desert to see some of the ancient Khwarezm fortresses. In the region of Karakal, Pakistan, there are 200 of these fortresses, some of which date back over 2,000 years. The Khwarezm people were Zoroastrians, who lived here for millennia, but their castles were abandoned in the 13th century following the conquest of Genghis Khan. Ayaz Kala is the oldest and most famous of these, consisting of three fortresses, the oldest of which dates back to the 4th century BCE. So Prakala was not just a fortress, but also the palace of the Khwarezm kings. Kizil Kala has been recently renovated, resembling exactly how all the other fortresses would have looked when they were built. After a day in the desert, we returned to Kiva, where we were met with a warm welcome from its people. Honestly, I don't think we've ever met such friendly people as we did in Uzbekistan. <laughs> Kiva is quite clearly ready for tourism. It's full of restaurants and hotels, but it's, there's barely anyone here, but the infrastructure is in place already. And there are such magnificent restaurants, just like this one here uh, that we're visiting today. And uh, everyone needs to come and see it. We spoke to the woman who runs this restaurant and she told us that while they do want tourists to come, obviously, they also want to retain the cultural integrity of the city. Instead of allowing her madrasa to be made into a hotel, she was in the process of trying to convert it into a centre for women to continue their traditional textile production, which we think is a fantastic idea. So come along and support her, and try her plov too, which is the traditional Uzbek food, of which there are many different varieties in each of the cities. 
What's so special about Akiva is that it's like the Aladdin live action stage film, but it's on a stage, it's the actual thing. It's beautiful. Totally worth it. Most of the buildings that exist in Kiva today date from the Khanate of Kiva, which spanned the same land as the Khwarezm between the 16th and 20th centuries. The Khanate was ruled by Khans, Shahs and Sultans, passing back and forth between empires and fiercely fighting for home rule in numerous bloody battles. But one thing that remained constant was that Kiva became one of the world's biggest slave markets, where they sold captured Persians and Russians. Kiva's reputation was formidable, with the Khans known as vicious warriors. So despite the city's gorgeous appearance, it does hide a rather dark past. In Soviet times, Kiva and its Khanate were divided between the Uzbek and Turkmen SSRs, meaning that when these two became independent countries, in 1991 the ancient region was divided in half. So you mean that if it wasn't for the Soviets, the country of Khwarezm would still exist? Exactly. It's our last day in Kiva. Last day. I feel sad to leave. Sad, very sad. Absolutely. Beautiful place. Yeah, I think, however, that we've done the Silk Road right, starting here, mm. because we've got a real taste of how wonderful it is. Um, but next we move on to... Bukhara. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share and subscribe. And follow us on Instagram at 15 degrees north. Make sure to tune in to our next video to see where in the world we end up next. See ya. Bye. <laughs>